Hello, it's Jill Tisbury. This is Fired Glass and it's time to crack on with our Boxing Hairs project. Welcome back. Um, when you last left us, we were painting uh, hairs with enamel paint. So we used the uh, Dove um, enamels or Rogue enamels, or uh, depends where you are in the world as to what they're called. But we used enamel paints anyway. It really doesn't matter um, which ones you choose, whichever ones you like, you can paint yours with. So these are the little chaps. Um, they've all been cooked. Um, these were the original ones that um, we had that we were working from. So I've got two pairs of these now. So I'm going to have a, a field day making some boxing hair projects. I've decided to go with these two, which were the ones we did last time. Um, we also did the moon. If you recall, we painted, um, this has not been fired. Um, so we painted on here um, the moon and we're now going to pop that on top and we get a sort of nice 3D effect with that and you'll see how that works um, as we start doing the project. So we're ready to go um, with creating the background on this project. So I'm just going to put this up on kiln props. If you can hear anything in the background, um, clicking away there you go does it nicely on cue that's the vitrograph kiln so we're pulling green stringers today so that's nicely heating up in the background so you can see i've popped my um project up on some kiln props there and um, whichever ones you've got to hand um, and the reason we've done that is because i've got a piece of paper underneath we're going to be using powders um, so for the sky because this is quite a dark, dark project uh, we're going to use some aventurine blue which is actually very very dark when you look at it in the um, pot there it doesn't look that dark but it's almost black and it's got aventurine in it natural mineral so um, it's got a, a little sparkle with it which all helps with the sort of night sky that we're trying to produce um, but I'm also going to use some midnight blue Ooh, lids coming off there you can't really see it in there, so um, you have a look when obviously this is fired, but the midnight blue is slightly lighter and I want to create a sort of graduated sky look. So that's why we're going with those two powders. Um, and because we're working with powders, I want to capture a little bit of glass there. Let me just move that, pop that in my meadow mix pot. Um, we want to capture the powder that comes off the edge because you want to be able to sift right over the edge of your project to make sure that you've covered it fully. And obviously we don't want to waste any so we need it up on kiln props so we can capture it as it goes onto the paper below just like when you were at school and playing with glitter. <laughs> well I've played with glitter anyway. Um, and also it's so much easier for you to pick this up if you put it on kiln props. So I'm um, going to move this out of the way. You remember um, we talked about this. This is the little piece of fiber paper that we're going to put when we fire this. We're going to put this in place so that the moon doesn't slump down over the three mil thickness of the glass. So I'm just going to move that out of the way as well because we don't want powder on that. Um, I have my trusty old, um, what is this? It's a tea strainer, tea strainer sieve. Um, which is fabulous for sifting uh, powder. I also want to do a bit of detail work. So we're using this one and keep watching because I've got a fantastic tip that um, Laura uh, Squisato, and I really do apologize because I'm sure I've pronounced your name wrong, Laura, but Laura um, has given us a fantastic tip when we're using this. So uh, keep watching for that. So aventurine blue, mineral, uh, mineral blue, midnight blue even, and uh, dense white opal powder is what we need for the sky. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put a mask on. Let me move that mask over there and I'll pop this one on. So obviously um, when you are working with powders, you need to make sure that you're safe. Um, so I'm just going to battle with this. Oh, there we go. It's not pleasant stuff, so you don't want to be breathing it in. Hopefully you can still hear me and hopefully I can still see. Hey, there we go. So we've um, done some 
basic lines here um, for the drawing and obviously these lines are going to get um, covered but the fact that you've drawn them it's almost like muscle memory it's in your head um, so you won't forget where you're putting your key elements so I'm going to start with this sieve this is my um, tea strainer sieve and you just press to open that I'm sure you've seen me do this before but anyone who's watching uh, for the first time this is quite a useful sieve to have because it covers a big area and you can see I've only filled it half full. The reason for that is because it tends to come out round the edge and you get some round sort of lines where you've sieved it. So you don't really want that. So make sure it's half full. Now take care here because we've obviously got the moon. We don't want to be going over the moon. I'm going to hold it in one hand and I'm going to tap gently with the other hand. Now we are obviously going to go over the moon ever so slightly so we'll get a paintbrush and we will get rid of that. I've gone really gently there and at the top you can see that I'm really getting quite deep with the colour. So this is quite dark because it's a moonlit night. Gently pop some of that down there and I'm quite happy with the thickness that I've got there. Empty that back into here. Give it a good old tap to make sure that you've emptied it. And then let's just move my hairs out the way. Move these over here. This might seem fiddly, but if you look at this, there's a fair amount of powder that we've got here. Just be careful when you do this that you're not knocking it. Just get this back into place. It's quite sticky, this powder. So give that a good old shake. And that's it. That's your aventurine blue done. So not very much um, of that on the top bit. But we're going to go with the midnight blue now. And I'm still going to use this... Um, tea strainer. You can see it's quite a different colour but it will blend together and it will create this night sky that I'm looking for, this sort of graduated night sky. And the fact that I've got a venturine under that bit will make that a little bit darker. So it's quite a dark piece um, that we're creating because obviously these chaps are I don't know whether it's dawn or dusk. I think mostly they do their scrapping around dawn time. So maybe the sun's just set. Uh, the sun, the moon's just setting a little bit. All these stories you make up for the pieces that you create. Eh? All right, let's move that out the way. Get this in here. Whoop. Marvellous. So that's Midnight Blue. So Aventurine Blue, Midnight Blue, that's all done. Don't worry about these um, little areas here because um, we're going to go over... I think I've got two fields I decided to do when we drew this the first time. So these are going to be two sort of ploughed fields in the background. So you need to get yourself um, a little brush and just you don't want to create a line as in a, a ridge on here you just want to gently brush these back just so that you don't have this covering the moon now this is creating a bit of a line here I'm not too worried because I've got a moon to go on top of this but I'll show you what to do if that happens. So if you drop anything on powder, normally when my students drop things on powder, it's the end of the world for them, but it doesn't need to be. You just need to gently press. You're not stabbing it. You're just gently pressing just to flatten that down a little bit so you don't get that ridge um, on there. Um, and then once you're happy with that, 
it's up to you at this stage if you want to put the moon on. I'm not going to put the moon on and leave it there. I'm going to put it on just to show you. And the reason I'm not putting it on and leaving it there is that as I'm shifting this back and forth when I'm collecting the, the greens that I'm going to put on next, it'd be too easy for me to um, sort of get rid of this uh, to, you know, for it to uh, drop off. Um, what I am going to do, I'll take it off, but what I am going to do is just go around the edge of it with some dense white opal once I'm happy with the rest of it on here and I put the moon in place. I'll just go around the edge of it just to make sure that it looks like it's, you know, like an icy sky where you see that icy mist around the moon. Um, but that will probably be one of the last bits that I do when I've done this background. So I'm going to move it for now and I get the rest of my background on. Um, keep my dense opal there, uh, dense white opal. I'm going to do the um, fields. Now, let's see what I've got here. Celadon green and mineral green are the ones I want. There we are. So these are two very light coloured greens, but Celadon is probably the lightest here. Um, and the furthest away um, the field is, the lighter it needs to be. So I'm going to go with Celadon because that's a lighter one. And I'm going to go with my little sieve here. And the reason I'm going with this one is because I want a more targeted approach to where I put the powder. So um, you can see how this sieve works. We fill it half full. And the reason we fill it half full is um, the, the powder needs to be able to bounce around in there to bounce out of the little mesh at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So you can get these in super fine and you can get them um, in fine mesh uh, sieves, uh, meshes at the bottom. Um, I, I find that the um, fine sieves are probably the better one. And the way it works is you, can you hear that? You push with your thumb this spring along this um, thread here. And what that does is it sets up a vibration and obviously the powder comes out here. Now that's fantastic if you can do that. If you've got arthritis, or if you've got any kind of issue with strength in your hands, then it can be difficult to do. So Laura um, Scrisato commented on um, one of our uh, videos, and John's going to bring that up on the screen. And this is what she um, gave us as a tip. And since then, Laura, all of my students do this. They absolutely love it. And I tell them all about you. Um, so it's just a, a metal spoon. You could use your tweezers. Um, I find this is easier. And here we go. How easy is that? Fantastic. So much easier. So little effort. Makes it so much better to do. It's probably obvious. Never was it wasn't obvious to me. Um, but it's probably obvious to uh, a lot of people out there. But it's a game changer for our students. So it's really good. Thank you for that. And if you guys have got any more tips like that, or any particular ways that you do things, anything that you find easier to do that we can pass on to other people, do let us know. So don't forget to um, comment below. There we go. Now, you notice here, this line went right the way up to a point here. Don't worry about the fact that you've gone over. There's not a lot you can do about that, really. Um, you could shift it if you want to with a paintbrush, so you could actually um, push that up there. I'm not going to bother because this is going to be a ploughed field. I'm going to make sure I get some nice coverage on that. And so because it's a ploughed field, um, we'll actually make sure that the ridges are in the right place. So that's my... Celadon green. Let's get rid of that. Our next one is mineral green. So again, half full. Push the spring out the way. And you can just... It's a slightly different colour. Uh, but you can just see uh, a difference there. Between the two. So this is getting um, closer to us. So we see more of the colour. Things that are further away, we see less of the colour. And violet's a good colour as well. Um, 
positive use for this light light violet not the deep violet running out there let's just fill that up so when you're doing bigger areas um, with this small one I mean obviously that is is quite cool when I'm doing smaller pieces um, then this is ideal when you're doing bigger areas you tend to get um, a few lumps and bumps here and there again I'm not too worried because I'm going to do the old um, plowing of the field with a colour shaper on this there we go and I've just realised I've got mineral green one side <laughs> and salad on the other so I'm gonna put use min uh, use my brush to just capture this there's not a lot that um, has come off that I'm gonna capture the other one there we go So not much powder at all, but I just don't want it mixing together. So now that I've done that, I can get myself a, um, excuse me, caller. <laughs> Let's move over to one of the other pots. There we go. Um, so I've got a colour shaper. Um, these are just a couple of quid from, uh, you know, the really uh, cheap art shops. Um, and they're really, really useful for doing anything like this. Um, so I think we're going to have this one ploughed this way. So I'm not dragging in this, I'm just dipping the edge of this. Um, but what I am doing is making sure that it's slightly wider at the front than it is at the back. And I'm curving my lines ever so slightly to make it look like they're going over the hill there. Um, but it's detail like this that really sort of makes a difference to your piece. And I'm just using this finger to support the hand here. You could obviously move this um, around um, if it's easier as well. So it doesn't take very long to do, but it does kind of give you this look as if it's ploughed and it makes a heck of a difference to the feeling of depth that you get in your piece. It's all of these lines that are sort of fooling your eye into thinking it's much further away from you than it is. So let's just finish this. The reason I'm not dragging it is because I don't want to drag the powder around there we go so that's one ploughed field so I think this one will plough the other way this always makes me laugh because I'm not sure if everyone gets this but um, this makes me think of Clarkson's farm Makes me think of young Caleb when he was ploughing the fields. And I need to make sure all the lines are straight. So there we go. There's a few undulations in this field. This is going up and over. But the fact that you um, sort of plough them in different directions kind of makes a difference as well. And then once we've done this, we're ready to do the foreground grass, which is going to be much lighter. Um, and I think I've chosen a fern green for that. Have a look, see what I've done. And that'll be quite quick for us to put on. So already, um, you can see with those two fields, we're beginning to get this sort of look um, of countryside, which is um, quite nice. So that was Celadon. For the furthest away mineral green um, for the closest um, and i have no fern green so i'm just going to go and get that off my shelf
so I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've got my fern green, um, which is this one. Um, doesn't look it in here. It says good to have a, a whole boatload of swatches, um, which we have in here. Everything that we have on the shelf, we fire in a little swatch just to show what it looks like once it's been fired because this is a beautiful countryside green which is really lovely it's a transparent um which is fine um most of the ones that we've used so far up here are opal um so they've got quite a bit of depth to them this one is transparent and it's kind of almost counterintuitive to what i normally say which is use the opals on the bottom because they're denser and therefore give you a good grounding. But I'm not too worried about this because this is going to get most of the elements um, of design on this piece. And so it's going to be strong anyway. Um, so that's absolutely fine. It'll look perfectly good when we've finished. And you can see I'm going to put quite a coverage of this so I've gone all the way over. I can still see my lines um, on here. So I'm actually going to grab some more. You can see why it's sensible to wear a mask. Because you've got a, the air full of glass powder, which you don't want. So I went over it once and I've gone over it again. Now where um, the two bits join, just here, again, I'm not too worried. I don't want to go too much over into the fields. Um, I've left almost a little, it's not a gap, but it's not as thick as it is in the rest of it because we're going to put hedgerows in here. Um, so that's empty my tea strainer, move this out the way. Again, you can see you don't want to disturb that powder. This is perfect. Um, once you've got kiln props, you can pick it up, move it where you want. You can also see why I didn't put the moon on there as well. So there we go. Empty this. And next thing we're ready for is some foliage. Right, I'm happy with my background and the way that's looking. Uh, so it's time to put some hedgerows in. Um, there's a few things that I've got here which um, are not really the ordinary type of things. This, let me just move this out of the way so you can see this in the camera. This is a Venturine Green confetti that I have crushed up. So this is what the confetti looks like. Confetti glass you can buy from your normal suppliers. And here's what I do. So I get my trusty old spoon. Let me just move some of these stringers out of the way. And I just get a shot glass like this. If you've got a pestle and mortar, maybe you want to use that. I use this because it's a little bit deeper. And what I do is I close my hand around it and I'm giving this a good old crush. Um, so I've, I've actually already done that. So you can see the sort of... Um, thickness that you get so it's not a dust it's not a powder it's not a, a confetti it's it's kind of something in between so what you're doing is getting the spoon in there I don't know if you can see that and you're just pushing it against the side of that little vessel that you've got there so anything will do and um, that you can get in there but it goes everywhere which is why I tend to put my hand over the top of it and close it and never do it over the top of your piece because you can guarantee it'll go all over the top of your piece okay so there's a few bits here um, that are a little bit bigger than normal so you can use your tweezers and you can pull those out um, there we go things like that and I'm sure I've, I've done this on a different one before as well um, but I'm sure when you look in the distance you look at hedgerows they've got all sorts of different sizes of bushes and trees so just have a little route through this and you can just put a little mixture or the odd one or two if they're a bit bigger just drop them in place or you can just grab a whole bunch of it on your 
Um, if you've got these, these are fabulous tools. Um, you definitely need these. Tweezers one end, shovel on the other end. Again, available from suppliers. Hold onto it and just tap. And if you, if you hold onto it like this, you can get as close as you possibly dare to your powder. And as you tap, well, you've got a hedgerow. You don't have to have that hedgerow in all the places. So you can just have, uh, you know, you don't have to have it all the way along the line. You can just have little bits of it if, the, if it's sporadic in clumps. You could even get some tiny stringers um, and you, some tiny little bits of stringer and make yourself a fence in there if you wanted to. Absolutely fine. But we need some gaps for the, for the hairs to get through. <laughs> so that's what I've done. I'm going to save that because um, I'm going to use that down here as well. Um, so I'm happy with that. That's OK. Got our hairs here. So I think it's probably time to put those in place. So you really have to be brave. I had two lines roughly about here um, as to where they're going. So I'm going to grab hold of one of these paws moment of truth just drop the back bit down and then drop and that way you don't disturb any of the powder so um probably gonna do this by the ears bless him he might be a bit further he's jumping up there we go they're not he's are they i said this last time so he and a she apparently there you go um what i've also done is got some um, stringers so these are my I don't know why, I said, I've just said to John that um, I've mixed together brown stringers, butterscotch stringers and black stringers in here. And you can guarantee whichever colour I want, it's at the bottom. So maybe I'm going to have to sort out um, my, my black brown stringers. But usually I'm going to use all three of them together. For this piece, I actually want to create a sort of um, like a mystic wood type thing. So I've got some really nice big old chunky bits here um, that are going to look like they're, they're big trees. And this is going to go up and around where the moon is. Um, so roughly about there, this is just in front of the moon. You can see I've just moved my powder there, so I'm just going to tap that a minute, which is fine. I'm not worrying too much because we're going to put some leaves on there as well. This is a really nice um, gnarly old branch, but don't forget to do this over here. You can just um, either do that with your fingers or if you want a bit more off there, which I do, do it with these. These are the um, mosaic nippers that you're going to use. Make sure the wheels are uppermost and then when you um, snap that, it'll go downwards. And don't worry about the fact that this is all over the place um, in terms of, you know, up and down. It really doesn't matter. It's actually going to slump down and probably make some interesting patterns. So roughly, I'm going to have that here. I'm not putting anything over the moon at the moment because our moon's not there. So I'm just going to make sure that drops in place there and then let it go where it wants to. There we go, so that will gently um, drop back down. Now, needs a few more branches on this, a few um, swirly branches coming up, and I've got some really nice bits um, over here. A little bit too long, so I'm just going to snap that. And what you might find easier to do is to grab them with your tweezers so that your tweezers are vertical like this. If you grab them like this, this is what I always say to students because they're always doing that and then you've got more chance of um, moving the powder, which you don't want to do. So grab them vertically, support your arm and just drop that into the place where you want it to be. So these are, are, are sort of going to be in a clearing um, and there's going to be trees um, around them. So I think I need a few more branches. I need some on this one. And to do this, I'm going to stand up because I want to be able to see where this is likely to fall when it slumps down. So if I pop that there, there we go, it's underneath. Let's move that powder that I've moved. It's underneath there, so that's fine. I can see that that's actually going to work. And I'm probably going to have another old branch here somewhere like that. And then this one, 
this is actually going to just turn it round the other way because that'll look a bit better. That's going to go on here. Fabulous. So quite happy about that. I'm going to get some thinner ones now, thinner black stringers, um, because I want to create some sort of foliage that's perhaps a bit closer. So we'll just go around with a few of these. These are just bits that I've rooted out of my tray down there. There's some really nice colours in the, uh, nice shapes in the organic stringers. Which is again what we're pulling today, but we're doing them in green. So I might put a few green ones on here as well. So I'm just creating this sort of clearing. Um, now don't worry too much at the moment. These look like they're floating. They won't look like they're floating in a, in a little while. So I'm going to um, put some um, frit around them. So I think uh, maybe a bit of butterscotch and some browns because we're out in the countryside. So we're just creating this structure first. And these bits are closer to us. Let's get some butterscotch for this bit. If you don't like the way they look, just turn them around, just move them. Put a few bits along the bottom. So we've got some nice dense undergrowth and this is almost like we're peeking through I don't know maybe a gap in the hedge or something like that where we can see these two having a good old scrap but because it's dark we can use some dark bits on here that are obviously in shadow or sun's, uh, the light's not quite got to them. You can tell I'm making it up in my head when I go all quiet. <laughs> so I'm just going to make sure that I've got quite a dense um, sort of area along here. There's a few brown bits that we're popping in. And then I'm going to use some vitrograph confetti, um, some green vitrograph confetti and some brown to create um, really, really lush, dense foliage. But I want a few grassy bits here, which is what these are. <laughs> Then we need some leaves on the trees. Okay, I think I'm probably happy with that. So I'm just going to pop these bits away. Just so that I've got space to work. There's some big old crunchy bits there that I thought I was going to use, but I'm actually, they're just tubes that I'm going to leave into there. So I'm going to pop the lid on that so I don't knock it over, because that's what I would do. Okay, there's a few bits um, where I've chopped them. There's a few bits here that have sort of come off, tiny, tiny little shards, which I'm going to pop in here. So that's all good. Right, vitrograph confetti. Um, when we make um, stringers, we get this stuff, um, which I know you've seen before. I love this stuff because it just makes the fantastic foliage along the bottom. So we're going to pop this in here. If you've seen it, never known what you want to use it for, this is the kitty. These are the kind of things that you would perhaps use it for. All the garden scenes, um, if you do the garden scenes with uh, flowers and things, then that uh, makes great undergrowth in there. Really, really good. Some of it is uh, 
you know where it's got broken up is much finer than other bits so you can just tap this on like this it's quite a quick way of, of getting foliage if you haven't got this then you can just use frit um, so you could use a venturine um, green which we've got which we're going to add in there because it's quite dark and it means that we're going to get some shadows coming along there but you can see how this is shaping up already looks like we've got some lush foliage going on Let's see if i've got some bigger bits here i might have a bigger bit there we go look at that chunky bit just to go in the bottom fabulous so that's our green stuff i get rid of the worst of this and then actually pick up all the little bits and they're going to go into the bottom of this just here just put my finger there to stop that falling off there we are so that's the green vitrograph confetti uh, which is lovely i've also got this which is um our brown vitrograph confetti um, so depending on what we pulled whether it was brown stringers um sorry i think that was butterscotch stringers those were brown and this was black so when obviously we are chopping that up we tend to get some smaller bits like this i don't know if you can see that as i move that around you can probably see it's almost like powder so i'm going to use that for leaves because some of those leaves are in um, sort of shadow. And this is a mixture of all of them. So there's a bit of powder in there, there's a bit of frit, um, but that is perfect. So I've mixed some brown, some black, and some butterscotch. There we go, that was the other one. So because this is in the countryside, this kind of gives the impression that we've got leaf litter along here and you can just have a field day with that actually so that can go wherever you want that to go the smaller stuff's at the bottom so i'll try and get some smaller bits and i'm really kind of getting um a good density of that there because i don't want this these trees to look like they're just floating. Might put a few green stringers as well. So we've got some green version of that, which is again vitrograph confetti that's all been crushed up. So it doesn't take a lot. If you've got frit, frit will do. Um, I would mix um, aventurine green with um, perhaps spring green, something like that. Fern green, maybe. Um, in fact, the fern green is, is really cool. I happen to have some fern green here. Just a tiny tub of fern green. <laughs> So this is fern green frit, and um, we use a lot of this, obviously. Um, this, um, as you can tell on here, because uh, it's, ah, it doesn't tell you, but actually you can tell by the code. If it's got one in front of it, it's transparent. If it's got a zero in front of it, it's opal. This is transparent. So because it's transparent, this will actually blend nicely. And I'm going to pop in here quite a few little sifts of this all of the stuff that's underneath i'll just move it to one side because um, i'm going to actually pop that back on here but that's um, a very very nice one to use all that will do is um, give that bit of texture to that bottom section there so let's move that out the way make sure you can still see and then this this is the black we can use some frit if we want um, but I quite like this for the randomness of the shapes that are on here so because this is of a night time I'm gonna have some black leaves I'm probably gonna put some aventurine green just to make sure that um, we've got the a few little 
black areas. Um, and I probably want to put some stringers. Where's the lid for this? Oh, here we go. So I'm just going to get my green stringers. And just put a few around the bottom of this um, couple of trees that I've got here. And we're nearly there. The last thing we'll do is pop the moon on there. And we're going to put that little bit of white around the moon that we mentioned earlier on. So these trees just have a little bit of growth around the edge, a few bits of sort of grasses growing around there. Let's put a few thicker ones. And almost at a point where we can call it finished. Mm -mm -mm. Let's have these going the other way. Let's move that that way. thicker ones here. Twist that round. Okay, so I'm happy with those. I want to put some Aventurine Green. Now Aventurine Green is a bit like being a watercolour artist and putting all the shadow bits into your painting and it kind of makes it come alive. So it's a really good one to have um, in the pot. So this is a venturing green. You can see as soon as you put something underneath there, that almost looks like it's grounded the trees. So they're not floating anywhere. And when you add that into here, then this is where the shadows come into play and I'm going to put just a little bit down here for the shadows of where these two guys are fighting. Okay, nearly at a point I think where we can put the moon on. I'm just going to add a few little orange bits in here just to indicate maybe some wildflowers. All this is, is um, again you could use for it, and uh, this is all the, um, I think it's tangerine dream clippings. <laughs> so this is when we've chopped up our tangerine dream marini but um, you can quite easily use orange for it. He's just fallen off, let's put him back. I don't know where he came from but I'll do there. Fabulous. Losing my top. Right, I think I'm happy with that. So I am just going to tidy up here. I'm going to put this flat. Um, I wouldn't normally do this because um, it's not easy to pick up once it's flat, but I'm going to pop it flat so you'll see what it looks like in the kiln. All of this stuff on the bottom of here. I can just put that back on here. There we are. So when we get this in the kiln, we're going to obviously have it flat on the board. Oh, adventuring green. Oh, that's what I missed, didn't I? I knew there was something I'd missed off the top there. So adventuring green leaves I wanted on here. my, there we go. 
These are great. Use them like a little dustpan and brush. <laughs> that can go on there. Let's just get rid of that bit on there and that bit on there. Okay, so just make sure if any of it's dropped onto the moon that we've moved it. Let's get rid of this. Let's put the moon on. So um, when it's in the kiln, which way around? There we go. Let's just get the kiln on there, uh, get the moon on there. And then this, I'm just going to put my, um, I'll put this mask on. Quicker. It's going to get my micro sieve again. This is um, dense white. And I just gently I go around the edge of here. A little shaft of moonlight. And this bit around the edge is, uh, you know, when you see it's a really frosty night, maybe, and you see a little bit of uh, moonlight glow around the moon. I might put a little bit of moonlight on the edges of the fields there. There we go. It's very subtle, but you'll still see it. Fantastic. I think I'm going to call that done. OK, so I'm really happy with that piece. Um, don't forget to keep your um, fibre paper underneath there to stop that from um, dropping down when you tack fuse it. So we're going to put this in the kiln. Uh, it's going to go on a tack fuse. Um, make sure you keep hold of the fibre paper once that's uh, been tack fused because, of course, you still don't want the moon to slump down when you do the actual slumping. Um, so the schedules for the tack fuse and for the slump uh, that we use are uh, going to come up on the screen and then here's the finished piece hopefully you've enjoyed that um, we love this piece it's looked fantastically atmospheric um, comment below don't forget and uh, like and subscribe to our channel um, so that you don't miss any more of the pieces that we do and um, there's a few more to come in this series of enamels um, with uh, a larger wildlife piece for the next one. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Lovely to see you and uh, see you on the next one. Bye.